Welcome to Zambition, the channel on which we engage in dialogue with leaders from across sectors and generations. Greetings and welcome to Zambition. My name is Martin Kalung Banda, your host on this channel. This week, I have the rare privilege of being in conversation with one of Zambia's most renowned traditional healers. His name is Dr. Rodwell Vongo. He's a campaigner for environmental sustainability, among many other accolades. Dr. Vongo, welcome to Zambition. Uh, Martin, it's a pleasure to have me. Uh, uh, thank you very much for having me. And I will begin by asking you the question, who are you? Vongo is a little young, humble, <laughs> uh, from a family of seven born from the family of seven. He went to school and has a, a very humble education. I did the, my diploma in Nairobi, Kenya, to do business studies. I worked for uh, Indigo after graduation there as a project officer, project manager, and uh, retired. I'm a small farmer. <laughs> I'm a, 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 a theologian. I went to Bible College to do theology. I'm an environmental campaigner. Uh, I'm a healer, and I'm a family man with uh, you know four children. You know, so the, the, this this uh, basically is what uh, could culminate into me. But, uh, I'm also the president of the uh, Health uh, Practitioners Association of Zambia Tipas in Zambia. I was Secretary General, then I was elected the president. Uh, in the past uh, five years, I'm um, doing my second term. Thank you very much, Dr. Vongo. I would now like to explore if you have any object that best describes who you are, or if you can share with us the person that has influenced you the most with regard to what your work in the world is today? I think my grandfather, you know, Vongo is uh, my grandfather's uh, nickname. Uh, you know, and we're all taking it from there. Uh, we worked 15 years together as a child. I thought I was helping my grandfather. We went collecting help in the backyard. We went far and near and across the borders in Malawi because we were from the east. So I thought I was helping my daddy's father, but in in his heart he thought he was inculcating uh, some 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 wisdom. And he was handing over the the pattern, if you like. He was handing over the, the 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 torch, you know, to me. So I took over his practice. I took over the the IK the indigenous knowledge. I, I took over all his apparatus, the book. And I took over the name and everything, the, the wisdom as well. Dr. Vongo, I just heard you use a, an acronym, uh, which, which, which uh, for me compares with uh, others that I have heard or learned about. Um, you said IK. This reminded me of IQ or EQ, which is emotional quotient. Some people have said there is also um, CQ, which is cultural quotient. So IK for you means uh, mm -hmm. indigenous knowledge. Knowledge, yes. That which you inherit, that which uh, is indigenous, it's original, and you can inherit it. It's, it's documented and documented, but it's still indigenous knowledge. So for, for you, this came through your grandfather? It came through my grandfather. My father also practiced, so we all practiced. 
So after the death of my grandfather, my father continued, you know, mentoring me. And uh, I have traveled, you know, quite uh, extensively. Uh, I've, I've been to Ghana, I've been to Kenya, Uganda. I've been to most of these uh, Scandinavian countries, you know, like Norway, uh, Sweden, <laughs> uh, Denmark, and uh, to, to name a few. And uh, we, we, we've done tremendous work, vast experience, vast IK knowledge, which need to be tapped. So uh, the, the, this is something that I thank the Lord for, because it doesn't come that easy. So in all these places you have mentioned, you were sharing or researching around indigenous knowledge, IK. Yeah, we like to research, we like to document, we like to see what works, what doesn't work, and uh, and what is dangerous. And the efficacy and dosage are very important uh, components of the research. But as you know, research is expensive. Research it takes long. And research uh, is the way to go for traditional medicine. So the pharmaceuticals, the paramedics, the doctors, the healers, they must work together because all the time, Martin, the grave wins. We are all losers to the grave. And we have lost a lot of uh, indigenous knowledge and documented wisdom, patent uh, on the IK because of lack of documentation, lack of research, and lack of uh, uh, understanding what is efficacious, uh, what is uh, dangerous, what is toxic, and the dosage thereby. So research is the way to go if Africa is to realize anything. They call it uh, supplementary knowledge or supplementary medicine in, in, in the Western side. Mm. But this is indigenous, it's the mother of all medicines. So it and can't be better. supplementary to what? Because before doctors developed clinics and hospitals in the West, there was a healer. Everybody in Egypt, everybody in Greece practiced, you know, herbal medicine. Then they developed from herbal to what we call now synthetic or modern medicine. So the mother of all medicine is indigenous med uh, uh, medicine, which is IK, which is traditional medicine, because God has provided. At what point, Dr. Vongo, in your upbringing, did you know or decide you wanted to be a healer? Or is, is it something you don't decide but somehow decided for you. What, what is your pathway to being the healer that we see now that attracts so many people from within and outside the country? Well, I think you, you, you should love humanity. You cannot heal somebody you don't like. You really either kill them or poison them. So if you want to heal somebody, you must love them. Put yourself in their shoes. You take the burden of their sickness. Uh, so it's, it's a really a call because I have strong love for patients. I feel very bad when I see somebody uh, uh, under, under the weather and they are unwell and I feel like doing something. And this is the passion that also I inherited from my granddad. So really it might have been like the Lord had they put things in such a pattern that after he was no more, I could take over so that there's continuity and there's institutional memory. But more than that, Martin, um, healing is holistic. Healing is uh, love. Healing is, uh, you must be passionate. You must have uh, passion for others. The drive to put things right. We all die someday, but uh, nobody should die because somebody was uh, negligent. Nobody should die because we didn't uh, reach out to help them in time. And uh, today, diseases have become so, uh, so, so complex. We have COVID, we have TB, we have uh, HIV, disease which my grandfather never treated, never heard of. But we are handling this, and uh, we, we must team up. Teamwork is the way to go. If we isolate ourselves, the paramedics want to do it alone, we can't achieve much. But when we team up, we will achieve much more, we maximize, we also optimize, you know, the resources which are meager. Because traditional medicine, you can get it in the backyard. And Southern Africa, Sadiq has abundant of these uh, efficacious uh, uh, 
uh, ecosystem, if you like, uh, biodiversity. And this is what we can get with local currency without reaching out to pay a dollar or a pound or a euro. So where will Africa or Zambia get money to import this medicine? We don't have the capacity to import. We don't have the capacity. So we must reach out to that what is ours, that which is indigenous, that which is in the backyard. And that's the way to go, that the traditional medicine is, uh, you know, the mother of all medicine is in the backyard. And we can reach out there without paying hard currency. Dr. Vongo, you have talked about collaboration in the medical field. A few years ago, I had the privilege of being on a learning journey in China, and I found in Beijing a hospital, a hospital that hosted the modern day medical practitioners, doctors, nurses, but it also hosted the Chinese medicine medical practitioners. They were working together, attending to the patients together. How far are we in the effort to collaborate between modern day medicine and traditional medicine in Zambia? Uh, thank, thank you, Martin. Um, I think China has uh, advanced so, uh, so far uh, very well. If you look at Chinese acupuncture, they are doing both the Western and tradition. And they have colleges and the doctors are certified, trained and certified. The same with the Ayurvedic medicine in India, a country I was privileged to visit also. They have state uh, training, uh, a number of training colleges and they certify these healers to prepare them so well that they are well equipped to help humanity in as far as uh, uh, Ayurvedic Indian ancient medicine is concerned. So China is also at, at, at uh, almost par, you know, doing that. So what you do need, uh, Martin, is you need the political will. You need a political will to uh, stigmatize the people because traditional medicine is highly stigmatized. There's so much myth, there's so much, you know, suspicion, there's so much undocumented and so on and so on. So you need the political will. Secondly, you need the, uh, the legal framework to push uh, these laws that inhibit and restrict the healers to say, no, this is uh, traditional, so it is backward. It's, uh, it's, it's, no, it's not scientific. And yet the medicine works. Second remark, you know, taking a leaf from your question and your, 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 your travel to China. Um, let's put it on record, Martin, that Western medicine can do very well with the drips, injections, operations, uh, uh, and injectables. A drip, oxygen, supply of oxygen including now in COVID, you know, oxygen is a, is a very important component of treatment. So the healers can't do that. The healers cannot test somebody to be positive COVID. They can't say you are seropositive for HIV or TB, whatever. But the Western medicine can. They can do a drip, they can do injectables, they can, they can give oxygen and so on and so on. They can test. Now, when you come to Western side, their weaknesses, so they don't understand the demons. They don't understand voodoo. They don't understand ghosts. They don't understand, you know, a curse, a, a, you know, a case, a speed. They don't understand these things because they cannot test them in the test field. They can't find them in the laboratory. But you don't need sometimes a laboratory to realize that this person is being haunted by demons. Some speak, some don't. Some are, you know, living beings and so on. So we need, on that ground, Martin, there is need to collaborate because there are limitations where a healer can say, I've done my part and I end here now, I hand over to you. And also the Western doctor will say, I've done all the tests and this patient is still unwell. What is the problem? The healer will say, 
these are demons, these are uh, ghosts, these are genes, this is witchcraft. Mind you, we're in Africa and there's a lot of voodoo. There's a lot of jealousy, petty jealousy, and we've lost lives. If they want your post, you are a king, you are a chief, you are a president, you are a manager, <laughs> they, will, they will do some magic to remove you. So Africa is like that. Can Western medicine find in their test tube? Uh, uh, you know, that this is witchcraft, these are demons, and this is a curse? No. So we, no. that's where there's a need now for collaboration. Collaboration comes in so that we optimize and maximize both the practice, reception, and treatment. Dr. Vongo, allow me to be um, just, a, a, as they say, devil's advocate. Um, yeah. if, if witchcraft is that powerful, how come we then didn't use it to fight colonialism and to fight the many people that oppress the continent of Africa? How have we not used such potents? To some extent, they, they've used it. Those witchcraft the attitudes and activities which were, were, were meant to fight the colonialists, uh, you, you find that uh, they, they were used. How did the, the Ngoni cross so many, many rivers from the south up to the east? They were crossing using certain magical power. How were they not beaten by crocodiles? Why were they not uh, uh, eaten up by lions? There's a lot of medicine being applied and so on and so on. But we were not there, so we can't know what they used and what they didn't use. But your question is, why didn't we use it to fight colonialism? As you know, witchcraft is secretive, so they will not expose it easily because it's done in secrecy. You know, you, you catch the enemy unknowingly. You come in there, they don't see you, but they're there. So it's like a spiritual um, ghost, you know, haunting and haunting and haunting. But they did use to some extent, but it's not documented. And it's done in secret. So it cannot be verified. But. So there is a question around the secrecy of uh, traditional um, medicine. Maybe it's the whole secrecy around indigenous knowledge, IQ, as you called it. Dr. Vongo, is there a specialization in traditional medicine? And if there is, which specialism are you? Uh, there is a lot of specialization in traditional medicine. The government of the day has put healers into four category groups. They face the spiritualists. These are people possessed by spiritual mediums, and they believe in prayer, in machabe, the demons. Then we have diviners. These are people with divine power. They can make diagnosis and then make prescription and treatment. Then we have uh, uh, the herbalists. These are people who just understand herbs. They don't have any spiritual mediums. They don't have the divine power. And they can uh, uh, say, I treat TB, I treat malaria, I treat STIs, and these are habits. Then we have the traditional uh, birth attendants who are midwives. They deliver mothers. <laughs> I was delivered in the village. So uh, I, I was the... I was received by a traditional base attendant. Uh, so those are the four categories. Now to go back to your question, specialism, yes. So a traditional base attendant is a midwife, is a gynecologist, if you like, if you want to promote them first. It's a gynecologist. They will receive, they know how to deal with the neonatals, antenatals. They know how to deal with the placentas, the fluids, how to protect themselves now from, from it. HIV AIDS, and they know how to deal with the umbilical cord and how to dispose and wash the baby and make them healthy. So that's a gynecologist or midwife uh, specialization, isn't it? Uh, then you have bone setters. They can set your bones. Instead of putting plastic or pallets, POP, <laughs> you just set the bones and the person involved in an accident is within days, within hours. Then you have uh, people who are specialized in TB, they specialize in uh, uh, production, productivity or fertility. People are having fertility problems, you know, 
again, those are specialized. People specialize in uh, uh, demon treatment, uh, psychiatry, uh, insomnia. Uh, psychiatry issues that looks like uh, issues where people are getting like uh, insane madness, you know, psychiatry issues. So there are specialities for healers who are specialists for flying, the sorcery. <laughs> so the sorcery group, the, 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 the witchcraft group, uh, the herbalist, the, the spiritualist, is a specialty division of labor, just like in the medical field where you have uh, uh, a, a surgeon and you have a pediatric specialist or a doctor specializing in children and so on and so on. So we also do a, a special and, and, uh, a division sharing, you know, people who have specialized in certain entities. Which, which specialism are you, Dr. Vongo? Yeah, uh, I'm a spiritualist. Uh, I combine the two because I divine and I treat. So I'm a herbalist spiritualist. I sorry, a herbalist divine. <laughs> I'm sorry to Thank you very much, Dr. Too. Vongo. I, I also know you um, as a Christian, a devout Christian. You are also an environmental activist. Mm -hmm. traditional healer, mm -hmm. indigenous knowledge keeper. Mm -hmm. Do all these things work together? Don't, don't they contradict Dr. Vongo? They do work together, but to some people they think, you know, <laughs> uh, when I went to college, I was already 78. Uh, now I'm 75. So I wanted to understand the Bible. And the, you know, save my my maker in a better under with better understanding and wisdom. So when I went to college, ah, I found students. Uh, I, I'm sorry to give you this little background. I found students who were the size of my grandchildren. They are calling me grandfather. And I said, yeah. And I I was very passionate. We made great friendship. Up to now, we are communicating. So the the some say, ah, what is this witch coming to do here? This one, they, so they went to the principal, is a Korean, and they went to the principal saying, no, we cannot have a Satanism, Satanist brought here to this uh, campus. Mm. So they wanted to host me out. But the, the principal said, no, he has also been called by the same God that called you. That's how I was uh, uh, protected and defended. Otherwise, I couldn't have graduated. So when I went there to graduate, then I understood that, in fact, Christianity, and the healing, they are partners. They go side by side. Because what Christianity and what Jesus, our Savior, said and did is exactly what the, the, the healer is doing. Matthew 22, uh, 35 to 39, saying, oh, love, you know, you should love your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul, and love your neighbors yourself. And you know, the late Kenneth Kaunda, that was his uh, doctrine part of his understanding. And love your neighbors yourself. So, you know, so when I went there, I understood the theology. You know, the theologians, how they really apply themselves with the Christian values. So you you cannot heal unless you have the passion and the love for other human beings, those who are weak. And God is so kind. God is God of the weak. Is not God for the rich and the strong. He is very passionate with orphans. He is very passionate with widows and widowers. He is very passionate with the sick. So we must follow in the footsteps of our Lord and Maker, Jesus Christ, our Savior. So, you know, yes, you can combine these because the two go together. They are one and same thing. You know, one and same thing. So Christianity, environment, yes. We are using the help which we get from the environment. The ecosystem, uh, Martin, and the biodiversity is being depleted, highly depleted. 50 years from now, we may have nothing to talk about, uh, about the uh, ecosystem. Global warming, all these things, we must all unite to fight this virus. Because at one time, you know, we will, it will be too late to, to do anything at all. So when you hear you are going into the forest, 10, 20 years ago in Lusaka, I could get my herbs, you know, five kilometers from my home. 
now I have to go 50 kilometers. So it means there is a high depletion of ecosystem and biodiversity. And sooner or later, we'll have a problem where to get these uh, uh, threatened uh, herbal remedies or herbal species which are threatened with extinction. So we must act now before it's too late. I think, Dr. Vongo, you all yourself and your colleagues in the indigenous knowledge field, a deep action-oriented conversation with at least two ministers in our new Dawn government. Mm -hmm. You need a conversation, if I may say so, with the Ministry of Green Economy mm -hmm. so that they can understand what you are talking about. And at the same time, I would suggest you need a conversation with the Ministry of Science and Technology because technology is not just about the app we are seeing yeah. on our laptops and our phones. It's also the technology that connects us to the earth, to the mm -hmm. soil and the plants that create our healing. Thank you very much for sharing uh, your knowledge around that. We are ready, really. Uh, Honorable Masebo is a new means of health. We are more than willing to meet them and share this knowledge. Uh, really, I am very passionate about this, and the sooner we can meet and the table issues and talk about the issues, the better, because surely one day it will be too late. So thank you for bringing that. And if I keep quiet, it's like we don't want to talk to our MPs. We don't want to talk to our government. Our association is more than ready to share and advise the government of the day, because we always work with the government of the day. Dr. Vongo. Yeah. What is your point of view on COVID-19 and what it is trying to teach us? COVID is telling us three things, Matthew, that we must prevent, we must keep clean, and we must treat. So prevention is the in thing. Prevention is better than cure. Can I wait until I'm infected? No, I must get a jab. I must be vaccinated. Am I vaccinated? Yes. Uh, so uh, we must vaccinate. Even if we vaccinate, that's why you saw me with a mask here. I, I must protect myself wherever I'm going because it's my life. It's my, 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 my only gift that God has given me. So it's telling us three things. Uh, it, it prevent, isn't it? Prevention. Then it's telling us uh, defend yourself, and then treat. If you're already infected, there's no way out. Treat yourself. Go, your, go to, to any, any, any clinic or hospital in time and be treated. So it's, it's, it's telling us the, the basic hygiene issue, basic hygiene. Not very heavy hygiene where you're going to wear PPPs, but this is basic. Wash your hands, wear a mask, and be treated. Wear these gloves, wash your hands, sanitize, and so on and so on. So this is what uh, the Bible is teaching us. It has always been teaching us that cleanliness is next to godliness. Thank you very much, Dr. Fongo. I would like now to ask you a question. What is your ambition? What is your highest aspiration for our country? Well, uh, for, for Zambia really as a country and me as a, uh, at, at 75 now I'm getting old. Um, we, we think the young healers will take up uh, the, 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 the banner, the, the, the mantle. Um, Zambia is endowed with a vast, you know, uh, eco and environment, uh, whatever eco and biodiversity. A lot of, you know, herbal, uh, if you like, efficacious herbal remedies, a lot of minerals, abundant rivers, many, many rivers, abundant water, and good soil. And we don't deserve to be poor as a nation. We are supposed to be on top of things. Our economy and GD at the GDP should be thriving. Um, all the other government, I don't blame any of them, Kaunda's time, Chiluga, uh, Banda, Manawasa, and, and Berafa, 
with, with the Michael Sata and the, and the President uh, Edgar Lungu. They did their best. During Kaunda time, I went to school without paying my fees because he was worried that uh, we need more educated Zambians. So as a country, we need to, to know where we are coming from. We, as a country, we must identify where do we come from as Zambia? And where are we now as a country? What are the challenges? You do a sort of analysis and say, what are the opportunities for Zambia? What are the threats for Zambia? What are the, uh, the weaknesses for Zambia? The moment we identify our weaknesses and threats, then we can manage to overcome and move this country forward. So I'm looking for a Zambia in the next 20, 30 years, which is vibrant, which is healthy, productive, God-fearing, and loving one another, and making our GDP you know, up, 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 up there, because we don't need to be poor. We don't deserve to be poor, given the natural resources that God has endowed the country. This is the Zambia that I'm looking forward to seeing. Uh, thank you, Matt. And may I put a rider to your Zambian, uh, if I may, Dr. Vongo, that it will be a Zambia that honors indigenous knowledge, as you have put it, including may. the possibility that uh, traditional healers will somehow open up a little bit to their secret knowledge mm -hmm. so that it can get passed on um, in a much more uh, open way uh, and that it doesn't die uh, when people like yourself who are gifted immensely mm -hmm. are mm -hmm. called back to the heavens. Um, that would be my uh, rider on your, on your ambition. Amen. Sorry, I hope I did. Also, Martin, um, there is this issue of uh, stigmatizing healers and uh, thinking that what they do is, uh, <laughs> is witchcraft or satanism. No, 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 far away from that. You know, issues which are theological, we should consider that these are theological. We can pray and the Lord will hear. The Lord always hears prayer. But issues which are scientific, we must treat them as scientific. You cannot, Martin, uh, just do prayer and fasting, prayer and fasting, and you find your farm has been planted and the maize is growing. It can't happen. <laughs> the Bible says the lazy ones should not eat. So what it means is that we need hard work. We need to work very hard as Zambians to turn the economy of this country around. Thank you, Martin. And finally, Dr. Vongo, what is the best piece of advice you have ever been given? I was trying to uh, buy property when I, 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 I retired from my, my employer. And uh, my aim was to put money into uh, a fleet of vehicles. And uh, somebody came to me saying, no, 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 a fleet of vehicles, you may win, you may lose. Uh, but the best investment is to buy a farm. So to me, that was one very good uh, uh, advice that somebody outside my family advised me because I wanted to buy a fleet of uh, taxis and uh, trucks or whatever. But he advised me to buy a farm. So that's how I managed to get a farm in McKinney. <laughs> that's where the whole family has settled now. Without this advice, I should have been having a fleet of vehicles. Maybe they could have broken down. Maybe I could have uh, uh, gone bankrupt. So I'm farming there. We are living there as a family. My family have also uh, uh, built on the same land. And uh, to me, that was a, a very good uh, piece of advice, which I, I really cherish uh, up to today from this colleague. Thank you. Buying land. Hopefully, uh, you can make that as an example of a medical uh, botanical garden. And, and therefore, people can learn from you um, by example. Dr. Vongo, thank you. Thank you very much for the healing you continue to bring to the so many millions that flock to you from within and outside Zambia. Thank you very much, Martin, for having me and thank you. I would like to God to bless you and your family. God bless your work.
having listened to the dialogue and followed my conversation with our guest, I now invite you to look at the drawing that emerged out of that dialogue. Take time to see the contours, the colors, the images that are reflected on the painting, on the drawing. And pay attention to what the drawing evokes in you. What are the feelings, what are the thoughts that are ignited by you looking at the painting? What thoughts does the painting generate in you with regard to your own leadership? What thoughts, feelings and images does this painting evoke in you with regard to the future of our country? Kindly share your reflections on this channel so that we can continue the dialogue on the future of the country we all love, on the future of our nation,